Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, your favorite medical channel. This playlist is called Pulmonology, and this is video number 7 in this playlist. We have talked about clinically oriented anatomy in two videos, then about histology, respiratory pharmacology, coanal atresia, and then today's video is epistaxis, also known as nosebleed. You, have, you injure a vessel and then you bleed from your nose. What is the cause? A variety of etiologies. Even Ebola can cause nosebleed. But please, pay attention. If you have a patient in your hospital and bleeding from nose, don't say, oh, it's Ebola. The, the world is coming to an end. It's Ebola. It's, it's happening here. Shut up. It's probably the patient was picking his nose with his finger. That's why he's having nosebleed. Okay. Common things are common, people. Common things are common. With that being said, now let's get started. First, let's answer the case of the previous video. You have a 72-year-old male patient with history of hypertension, nosebleed right now, it's severe, and the blood pressure is 160 over 100. What's the next best step in management? Please pause. And the answer is A, blood pressure control, posterior packing, and vessel ligation. Why? Because he is an elderly, he's hypertensive, he's having severe nosebleed. This is very different from a young kid who is three years old, picked his nose with his fingers, and now he's bleeding. It happened once, it never happened again. With that, you just have like some local pressure and reassurance. If you want to be so generous, add phenylephrine nasal spray, and that's about it. But when an elderly hypertensive patient is bleeding from the nose, you better pay attention and act quickly. This could be life-threatening. There are two types of nosebleed or epistaxis. There is anterior epistaxis and posterior epistaxis. Anterior is the more common, young patient, due to mucosal dryness, for in body, you know, kids put anything in their nose or in their mouth, or picking with your fingers. And it's less significant. Okay, all right. But posterior bleeding is less common, however, more severe and more significant. And it happens usually in older patients, especially if they are hypertensive. And this is bad. That's why the answer to the case was blood pressure control, nasal vessel ligation, and posterior packing. Posterior packing is when you put like a piece of, I don't know what they put, cotton or something here, and you pack it, baby. You, you block it, all right? Because it's severe. So nosebleed, two types, and two, which is the most common, posterior less common, but more dangerous symptoms. Blood coming out of the nose. Yep, it's nosebleed. Blood coming out of the lacrimal ducts. What? Because those lacrimal ducts open into the nasal meatus. What's the nasal meatus? You're gonna have to watch my previous video. Okay, blood coming out of the mouth. And then it's called vomiting because it's if you're bleeding from your nose and then blood in your nose, your pharynx and then your esophagus, you can vomit it back through your mouth, but the source was your nose. Blood coming out of your anus. What? With stool, yes, again, you swallowed your blood, esophagus, gonna go to the rectum. And this is, of course, very rare, and the blood is cathartic, which will cause diarrhea. And this diarrhea is gonna have some dark blood. Why not bright? Because bright blood is coming from the anus, like the source of bleeding is anorectal. But if the blood is dark, it has passed through the stomach, because there is acid hematin in the stomach, which makes the blood dark. If you want to know more about dark blood, brown blood, bright blood, watch my videos on aspirin. I've talked about this in detail. Cool. Rule of thumb, blood is cathartic, iron is constipating. That's why when you have a patient with iron deficiency anemia and you prescribe iron tablets, you say like take three tablets a day and then the patient, you know, I have been suffering from this anemia for a long time. I'm gonna take seven tablets, man. What's gonna happen? Let's kick this iron deficiency anemia in the butt. When the patient takes seven iron tablets, iron is constipating. Of course, the symptom is gonna be, I'm so constipating, my doctor is idiot. Okay, what kind of defense mechanism is that? It's called projection. When you understand that this is a defense mechanism, you don't yell at your patient and shout and do all of this horrible stuff. Just try to understand the patient and where they're coming from and but just be calm, be peaceful, because this is your freaking job, doctor. Okay, epidemiology, bimodal age distribution. Do you remember there was a disease in hematology with bimodal age distribution? If you say Hodgkin's lymphoma, you're absolutely correct, baby. Okay, let's talk about epistaxis. Younger than 10, so here is the graph, 
and here is like zero. So younger than 10, there is a peak, and then there's 10, and then older than 50. So here's 50, and there is another peak. Peak of what? Of incidence. If you have a, like, let's say a child five years old, what's the most common? Is it anterior or posterior? It's anterior. How about an old guy? It could be anterior or posterior, but if it's hypertensive, please suspect posterior. Which one is more common? Anterior. Which one is more dangerous? Posterior. Causes of nosebleed. So most commons are here, then coagulopathy, inflammatory, whatever, whatever, whatever. Please don't ever forget this. Nose picking is by far the most common. My kid is bleeding from his eye. Probably put his finger in his nose. Calm down, mama, it's gonna be okay. Or for an object, in this case, you gotta get the foreign object out or blunt trauma okay when someone punches another person in the face and the RTI upper respiratory tract infection sinusitis rhinitis etc coagulopathy anything that will lead to bleeding thrombocytopenia because of defective primary hemostasis von Willebrand disease defective primary and secondary hemostasis why primary because von Willebrand disease is problem with von your von Willebrand factor the platelets cannot attach to the endothelium that's a problem with primary hemostasis also in von Willebrand disease there is a problem with factor 8 and factor 8 is a factor in the coagulation factors that's why you have problems with primary and secondary hemostasis that's why your bleeding time is prolonged and so is your PTT baby what else? Hemophilia. Why? Defective secondary hemostasis. Problem with the coagulation factors. If it's hemophilia A, it's factor 8. If it's hemophilia B, it's factor 9. If it's hemophilia C, 10. No, wrong, 11. 10 is the most important factor in the coagulation. You want to be deficient in factor 10, you're dead in a second. It's, uh, it's horrible. So you mean, or you're saying that factor 10 deficiency doesn't exist? It does exist, but not in hemophilia. Okay. Leukemia can lead to coagulopathy, absolutely. Inflammatory, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly known as Wagner's or Wagner's. SLE, lupus, of course, of course. Iatrogenic, anticoagulant, warfarin, it disrupts the secondary hemostasis. Heparin, same thing, disrupts the secondary hemostasis. Insufflate drugs such as cocaine, big time. Cocaine can lead to nosebleed and even septal perforation. You know that nasal septum between your right nostril and left nostril? It can be perforated with cocaine use. Nasal spray, especially steroids, for a long time. Whenever you give steroids, try to give it for a short time as much as you can. Neoplastic squamous cell melanoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma, and nasopharyngeal carcinoma. What's the virus? It's the ugly Epstein bar, man. Traumatic anatomical deformities such as septal spurs, blunt trauma, foreign bodies, and nasal bone fracture. Vascular hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia, also known as Osler Weber Rando disease, which is an autosomal dominant disease, right? Carotid artery aneurysm and even an angioma. There is another cause of nosebleed, it's called angiofibroma. It's not that common, but baby, this is so bad. It's so bad because it's malignant. It's not malignant. It's benign, but the location is horrible. It's in your nose. There's like lots of blood supply in your nose, and this can can bleed. It's it's horrible angiofibroma. So we have four facts here. If you can grasp these four facts, you're an expert in epistaxis. Please pay attention. If the child, it's probably because he's picking his nose, bleeding from anterior septum. What's the treatment? Local pressure and phenylephrine spray will save the day. If it's severe, anterior packing because it's coming from the anterior nose. If it's a youth or young adult, cocaine, please don't forget that. So what's the treatment? Posterior packing. Mnemonic, cocaine comes in packages, so you should pack the nose. Youth or a young adult, there is the horrible juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma. What's the treatment? Surgical resection is a must. It's not a matter of your opinion. No one cares. Mnemonic, OMA means mass, and you should remove it. Even though angiofibroma is benign, it eats and erodes the surrounding structures. You know what? Panis in rheumatoid arthritis, it's not cancer, but it eats and erodes the local surrounding structures, such as gamma in tertiary syphilis. It's not cancer, but it eats and erodes the surrounding local structures, like tuberculoma in tuberculosis, which is a granuloma. It eats and erodes the surrounding structures. Same freaking concept. 
Now fact number four is by far the most important one. Elderly patient, hypertensive patient, huge amount of bleeding. What's the treatment? Blood pressure control, posterior packing, and vessel ligation. You go all in because this is severe. Hemorrhage that are life-threatening occur in the posterior segment. What's the artery? Sphenopalatine, which is a branch of the maxillary artery. Common causes include foreign bodies, especially if it's a kid, trauma, allergic rhinitis, etc., etc., etc. Please remember to remove the foreign body. Juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma is a benign tumor of nasal mucosa. The tumor, that's why we call it oma, consists of blood vessel, that's why we call it angio, and fibrous tissue, that's why we call it fiber. Male adolescent is the typical patient, profuse nosebleed, biopsy may be contraindicated due to risk of severe hemorrhage, but again, you should talk to your ENT, I'm not an expert in this issue, because if you ask any pathologist, of course I've seen angiofibroma on a biopsy before, so yeah, only the ENT can decide whether or not to biopsy this. So here's case number six with two questions. Here is one. The second is in the next page. So where is the first five cases in the previous videos, honey? The playlist is called pulmonology. That's why you should watch my videos in orders. All right. Three-year-old Caucasian Bowie presents to your office with his parents because he coughs cupfuls of pus. Not just teaspoon, but cupful. Every day, his parents have to put him in the prone position in order to clear his lung of the pus. He's adopted child, so the family history is not available. On speculum exam of the nasal cavity, you notice bilateral nasal polyps. Question number one. What's the next best step in management? Reassurance. Report to the child protective services for suspicion of Manchausen syndrome by proxy. Order a chloride sweat test. Surgically remove the polyp. Order a chromosomal analysis to check for trisomy 21, also known as Down syndrome. Prescribe antihistamines, decongestants, and nasal phenylephrine spray. Please let me know the answer in the comments. Question number two. Which of the following is likely to be present in the kid? Allergic rhinitis, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, atopy, bowel obstruction, duodenal atresia, or coanal atresia? Again, let me know the answer in the comments section. And you will find the answer in the next video in this glorious playlist. And in the next video, we'll talk about nasal polyps. Because this kid had nasal polyps, so let's talk about nasal polyps. Let's be honest, you're struggling with microbiology. Legionella, mycoplasma, pseudomonas, rhinovirus, staph, and streptin, all of this crazy stuff. Picmonic will help you. They have animated video-like medical mnemonics. Please see the link in the description below. And they are not a sponsor of this video. Guys, I would really appreciate it if you can support my channel on patreon.com slash medicosis. I'm gonna send you my cases, my notes, and those notes are downloadables. I have audio notes, I have articles, I have these PDF illustrations. They are fun. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.